Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Fall 2024 Identity and Computing Lecture Series panel. Today, we have the Student Advisory Board um, from ACE here to talk about, um, to be on a panel called Toward a More Equitable and Inclusive Future Student Insights. Um, my name is Bridget Ajari. I'm a current PhD student at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, um, studying computer science, and my interests um, lie generally in broadening participation in computing. Um, and today, Jabari and I will be moderating our panel. Um, Jabari, do you want to introduce yourself? I would love to. Thank you for the opportunity and the introduction, Bridget. My name is Jabari. I'm a second year computer science PhD student currently at Duke University, but I also got my undergrad. My research broadly focuses around understanding people's security and privacy understandings, preferences, and concerns, specifically with emerging technologies to be able to ensure that we can develop equitable technology and also develop the policy that needs to go alongside it to ensure these things are benefiting everybody. Great. And yeah, we have uh, our fellow student advisory board members here with us today, and we're going to allow them to introduce themselves. And while they do, they're also going to be answering the question, what made you decide to pursue computer science? Um, so we'll start with uh, Kiana. Uh, can you please introduce yourself and uh, what made you decide to pursue uh, computer science? Yeah, absolutely. So hello, everybody. My name is Kiana Belante. I use she, her pronouns. I'm currently a senior undergrad studying computer science at the University of Washington in Seattle. And I really wanted to get into CS because, well, actually, I didn't know a lot of coding going to college. Um, I did a lot of volunteering and service in um, my high school. And I knew that I really wanted to be in a field that was very broad and was able to make a lot of impact on a large scale. And I felt like technology would be the perfect tool to do so and really leverage to impact people directly. So I thought computer science would be a really interesting way to go about that. And yeah, that's kind of how I started my journey into computer science. Great, thank you. Uh, Reagan, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you, Bridget. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Reagan. I am a senior at Duke University studying computer science and child policy research. And why I decided to pursue CS was because growing up, I was always excited about STEM education and problem solving. And I thought that dis discipline really combined all of those aspects really well. I participated in things like Science Olympiad and our Women in Science Club in my high school. Um, and while these were more broadly towards science, I usually gravitated towards the activities that were focused on like engineering and computer science. But then my decision to pursue this field later was solidified after I read the book, Weapons of Math Destruction by Kathy O'Neill, my sophomore year of high school. And so now I'm really excited to be able to actually be in this field and be working towards some of the same things that she wrote about. Great, and uh, Samantha? Um, hello everyone, thank you Bridget for giving me the chance to speak. So hello, uh, I am Samantha Ahmed and I am a junior majoring in computer engineering with a minor in electrical engineering um, at the University of Texas at Arlington. So the reason why I chose computer science is sort of why um it's sort of because when i was when i was a child i saw mostly everyone in my family is doing medicine and i sort of wanted to add a uh, diversity to it and however i didn't want to do it in the way that they did it by by treating the patients or by curing patients right um i thought that computer science would be a really good way of sort of um using technology and all the up, like sort of using technology and um, in, in order to create a huge impact to the world in the same way that my dad and everyone, my uh, parents, everyone in my family uh, is doing. And also I was very interested in the field of robotics and machine learning. And I thought that computer science or computer engineering would be one of the best ways of integrating my interests with the, with what, with, with, with the interests, uh, sorry, with the impact that I can do to the world. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, and then I guess Jabari and I can answer this question because I think it'd be fun for us both to give our insights as well. But um, 
Yeah, I same a lot of the same reasons as the panelists mentioned before. Um, I think growing up in the Bay Area and like Silicon Valley, CS was always just the exciting and fun thing to do. So that I think naturally pushed me towards computer science because it's what everyone else was doing. Um, and I did enjoy math and STEM. Um, so yeah, Javari, do you have any insight? Absolutely. You know, we've heard some great perspectives so far, and I feel like my own answer is kind of a melange of the different things that we've heard. So coming into my undergrad, I definitely was pushed in that direction just because it was kind of a hot, trending topic, you know what I'm saying? Took my first computer science class, and I found it was very transformative. I found that the concepts that I was introduced to were things that I was familiar with, but I didn't necessarily have the words to put to them. You understand what I'm saying? So being able to learn these things formally in such a progressive and just generally exciting environment such as Duke for my undergrad degree was very, it was something that that gave me that passion and I feel like I still carry with me in my program as a PhD student now. So we've heard from the entire panel at this point for this question right here. We're gonna move forward a little bit into our next question. Starting off, I would like to know what is something that you wish that more people know about the computer science major experience? The way that we're going to do this is I'm going to posit this question to one person in particular, and whoever would like to follow that up after they get done speaking, feel free to contribute. We're going to start off with Monica here. Monica, do you have any thoughts for this right here? But we're not going to start off with Monica. We're going to start off with Kiana. Kiana, do you have anything to contribute? Yeah, I think something uh, going into the major that I wasn't really expecting is how like in the computer science major specifically, there really is no linear experience or journey throughout the major and what you get involved in and what you can do even after the major, like learning about different career paths and like not only like industry and like preparing for technical interviews and doing all of that, but also getting involved in research and academia, thinking about teaching positions and um, even working for nonprofits, I think is something that was really new to me when I was going into the major and something that I didn't really know. And I think it's something that people should really consider as they're going through the major, kind of like thinking about how there's no really no perfect formula to, you know, a great college experience or what you can do after and that there's no real like big set expectation on what defines, you know, you being a successful person in the major and beyond college. That's fantastic, Kian. Thank you for contributing that. Samantha, I know you might also have some thoughts here. Do you have anything that you would like to add? Um, yes, definitely. So as for me, um, I think that one of the things that I knew before joining computer science is the fact that like when I was in my uh journey of choosing whether I should do computer science or not, uh mostly everyone around me would say that the major itself is really difficult and there are a lot of different uncertainties. Um, in the field, which there probably is, however, it's not as, uh, it's not as romanticized. Like it's, I feel that it's essentially romanticized to be a very um stressful major. And even though there are different challenges and different struggles that we come across, um, we should not really, you know, hold ourselves back just because the it, the entire society thinks that it's a difficult major. So at the very, like, even before starting my journey into computer science, I was under the impression that's going to be difficult. And because I had that mindset, that sort of created a barrier for me in my classes to properly understand the concepts or to, to properly, uh, you know, be successful in that, in those courses, I would say. Um, and therefore, I would essentially recommend everyone who is choosing computer science that even though there are different challenges that you will be facing, but um, just I would say that just don't be under the impression that it's the journey would be the same for you as well. So um, yes. Yeah, thank you both. I totally agree. There's a lot of like just chatter about what CS is and what CS isn't, and it's important to have multiple perspectives on from people for in the major. Um, so thank you for sharing yours. Um, our next question is, can you share a specific experience where you felt a lack of inclusion or equity in your academic journey? Um, and for this one, we'll kick it off with Reagan. 
Yes, thank you, Bridget. Um, so I would say one specific experience where I felt a lack of inclusion was in eighth grade. It was my first day of pre-calc and usually on my first day of classes, I like to have a cute little outfit. So I was wearing like a red turtleneck, some ripped jeans. I just bought like some new silver hoops and I was walking to my class and the future teacher of my class stopped me because she didn't think that I was supposed to be in that class. And so after some back and forth, she made me like dig through my backpack in the middle of this very busy middle school hallway to find my schedule. And like this happened in front of the whole class because like the door was open and I was just looking in and seeing everyone's face. And I realized that like I was the only black girl that was going to be in this class. And so like this interaction with her kind of really like destroyed my confidence in terms of like my ability as a math student and as someone in an advanced math class. And I feel like as I progressed in that class, I was like less confident to like raise my hand and participate. And so like, even though this was like a very small interaction in the first day of school, like it impacted like the rest of my school year. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Um, Samantha, do you have anything to add? Um, so yes, yeah, so uh, it was during one of my um, sophomore level classes over here at my university when I was taking differential equations and linear algebra. Um, I walked into that class and that that class was is, is supposed to be a um a two thousand level class, right? So I sat over there and I saw the professor walk in. That professor was um. Okay, so that professor was male, and everyone in my class, like, after a few minutes later, all the students started walking inside the classroom as well, and I did not see even one single female. It was just male, and I thought that, like, um, when I turned my head around, I also, like, I was sitting on the, on the front row, um, and when I turned my head around, I saw that each and every one in that classroom was a male, and there were... Like, it was just me who was sitting on the front row being a female. And even though it wasn't, a, it wasn't a big problem, but I did feel underrepresented and I did feel that there should have been um, more women in that, in that specific class. Or I had the question of why weren't there, uh, you know, like, what was the uh, reason for this gender, um, you know, depolarization in that, in that class. So, yeah, that was one of the times when I did feel that I wasn't really included in the major of computer science. Yeah, thank you both for sharing those stories. I know they can be very personal. Um, so thank you for sharing with the audience. Absolutely, I want to second that. And thank you, Samantha and Reagan, for sharing those experiences. Moving forward on the other hand, are there any positive ex experiences or interactions that you've had with faculty? students or community organizations on your campus that made you feel seen and supported? I'm going to start this question off with Kiana. Yeah, I think for me, a lot of the ways that I've interacted with people um, is probably through my research, um, in particular, like um, working with faculty on research projects I generally cared about really just showed me the like all the different ways that you could use technology in maybe more impactful settings and uh, specifically in the types of projects you do. Like in the past, I've done like things revolving around creating a social computing curriculum for middle and high school students or um, working on a VR project to help people with Parkinson's disease and accessibility work and I feel like working with other students and uh, graduate students and um, faculty who are also really passionate about those really just showed me like how much you can do and all of the different career paths I might be interested in, in the future and I think just also like um, communicating with uh, people at like student events or like with faculty during office hours where they're really open to sharing their experiences and talking about their hardships and giving advice to um, students like myself I think has been incredibly impactful and has been a really positive enhancement to my own undergrad experience. All of that is fantastic. I really appreciate you sharing that. And it's great to hear that you've had those, those outlets to be able to have those experiences that you've been talking about. Samantha, do you have anything that you will follow up with? Any of your own perspectives you'd like to share? Um, yes, of course. So my experience, I would say, is pretty much uh it's pretty much similar to Kiana's, like after after um 
choosing the major of computer science, I thought that it's not going to be the best idea to only restrict myself within my uh, academics and to only just go to class and then come back home. Um, I joined a bunch of, sorry, I joined a bunch of different organizations related to computer science and electrical engineering. I also uh, joined a research group, which has also, which had been an amazing experience as well. I got to know a lot about circuits and electronics, along with um, how programming and coding works. So um, I would say that that would was that that was a re really rewarding. Like this journey itself is really rewarding, and I'm learning a lot about both the majors of computer, like the entire field of computer science and engineering, to a uh, to a very large extent. I'm very glad to hear that you've been able to have that experience. And same for Kiana. I'm very grateful to both of you for sharing these, these opportunities that you've had while you've been traversing this journey. Thank you. Yeah, and kind of along the lines of like broadening our perspectives on what we think computer science and computer scientists are, or this question is, what is the most important skill for a computer scientist to have um, in your opinion? And we can start with Reagan for this one. Yes, thank you. I think this is a great question. And I actually have three skills. Um, I think the top three to me are, you should have empathy, um, intellectual curiosity, and compassion. I feel like all of these three in conjunction allow you to be able to do things like consider the perspectives of those who are most vulnerable to technology's misuse, especially as you will be the one developing said technology. And then also it helps you to be able to proactively address the inequities in your work. And I find that that is often that's something that's often something that is missing within um, some of our computer science departments, especially as we transition to full-time roles or into academia. So I feel like it's really important to center some of these like soft skills as opposed to the technical skills as well. Yeah, and Kiana? Yeah, I think for me, the biggest skill that I found uh, to be really helpful is just the ability to keep an open mind, um, which I feel like also leads to a lot of great, uh, like other really great skills, like better communication and understanding. I think there's definitely a lot that you can learn and grow from other people's ideas and backgrounds. So being able to keep an open mind and being able to like take in other people's thoughts and combine them with your own or um, also under understand like their other people's identities and backgrounds and the intersection of those I think can contribute to overall like a really great holistic uh, product idea initiative whatever you're trying to plan or do as a team together in the end so I think yes keeping an open mind and really just like considering the entire team and the audience that you're making things for is really critical especially in the computing space yeah thank you both I think those skills are really really great and when we think of CS we might think of you know a lot of people say, oh, you need the skills of like passion or like attention to detail. But then like remembering that computer science is more than just programming and you're actually making something that impacts people or you're making something with people. So you need to like keep that open mind, keep in mind that what you're doing can have um, implications for many people. Um, I think those skills are really great. Absolutely. And continuing on with the theme of things that have contributed to you being successful while you've been in this environment, I'm curious to know what organizations, if any, have you been involved with on campus? And what role can faculty and staff play in supporting these organizations? For this question right here, we're going to start off with some answer. Yes. Um, so for me, I have been, from my freshman year, I would say I, I started being involved in the software development clubs that we have on campus. One of uh, one of them is the Association of Computational Machinery or ACM. They also hold um, yearly hackathons and I all, I would always uh, participate in those hackathons. Currently, uh, there was one hackathon that we had a couple of weeks ago and I was also a part of that. Um, along with, uh, sorry, other than that, I am also a part of a mobile development club and a bunch of other uh, engineering organizations that we have on campus. There is one that is called that is known as the um, as Engineers Without Borders. The main objective of our organization of that organization of mine 
um, is sort of help using our engineering skills and the knowledge that we have gained in the in our undergraduate years in order to help and support the communities which are in need. For example, we have currently we have a currently um, sorry we have a project that is currently going on at Bolivia where we are building um, dams for the people who don't have access to free water and sorry free and uh, clean water. So that is one of the main um, I would say objectives of that organization. And other than that, I, I tend to feel that these are that joining organizations and clubs are really important in our undergraduate uh, years. Most people, because of the overwhelming pressure of academics and studies, they just choose not to be a part of it. Um, but I think that other than grades, it's really important to grow. In order to grow holistically, we have to build our skills in areas, uh, uh, in in areas that doesn't really require us to be academically smart, but to be more uh, street smart. And along with that, I would say the role that uh, faculty and staff can play is the is is the is through the interactions that we build. Uh, with them. So I would say that, um, for example, by joining all of these clubs and organizations, also being a part of um, ACE and also being a scholar at in STEM, I was able to connect with a lot of different great uh, individuals, a lot of different in, uh, influential people that I probably would not have been able to be, uh, that I probably would not have been able to interact with if I wasn't a part of it. So I think that it's really important to have those um, connections and to sort of be more involved during our undergraduate years. If we want to be a very good software, you know, a, a very good software developer, but along with that, um, be successful as a human being as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And I really appreciate how you stress that that growth is very multifaceted. You know, it's not just limited to being successful in the classroom. You have to put in the work in all these different capacities to become the person that you would like to be. Thank you for sharing that. Kiana, we're going to pivot to you. Do you have anything you would like to share here? Yeah, so I'm really involved um, on my campus. I think for one, um, I'm really involved in outreach efforts in my university, including being a part of like the outreach committee um, for uh, working with grad students and um, kind of like making lab activities, doing visits to schools around my area. And I also used to lead a committee on the Society of Women Engineers at my university, um, where we also taught engineering lessons to middle and high school students. And that was a really great opportunity to kind of like broaden participation and talk to students directly and be able to share my own experiences, uh, learning about computing and kind of getting people excited about that. So that was a really uh, great experience to have. And then also as part of student leadership in my department, uh, we also have things like mentorship programs or we host um, panels where we do oftentimes invite faculty and staff to talk about their personal experiences or to help mentor or give advice to students. So I think that's a great way that um, those uh, that faculty and staff can get involved and try to support these initiatives. And um, something really cool about my school is that we actually, um, my first year, uh, we call it the Allen School Scholars Program, which is a, a one-year program where uh, they, uh, it's like a program where they support students who are first generation low income and undeserved communities where they kind of give you mentorship, give you extra courses to help you transition into college. And I think for me, especially as somebody who kind of fit into some of those uh, aspects and demographics was super helpful kind of transitioning into college and being also surrounded by a, another cohort of people who identified similarly as me. And also in my institution, uh, one of the projects I've worked on research-wise revolves around accessibility and education. And I think that was something that was really enriching to me personally. Um, for one of the projects I worked on was incorporating accessibility concepts and design practices into our undergrad data structures and algorithms course. Uh, so also, in addition to students learning about like technical skills, but also thinking about the technology they make and how they can make it more inclusive right from the get go as they're designing these different technologies. And so I think that's something that uh, so a lot of the classes in my institution are trying to slowly incorporate into their curriculum. And I think it's something that a lot of institutions also have a great opportunity to think about too, um, figuring out how they can further expose these accessibility concepts and practices into their work um, for students. 
you know, I really appreciate all the perspectives you just shared. I want to bring special attention to something that you said about the the fact that when you first got to your program, they took extra care to help surround you with these people who were able to give you that particular type of assistance based on the identities that you might have. That's something that's really important to be able to feel that support from your from your institution. Reagan, do you have anything you would like to share here? Yes, thank you, Jabari. I would say similar to Kiana, I'm very involved in different outreach efforts at my university. Um, I'm currently the vice president of um, this group called Duke Technology Scholars Community Development Program. And so uh, it's called DTEC, and it's an organization for women and non-binary individuals in tech at Duke. And a lot of my efforts include organizing different events for the members. And that can be something like painting with each other during the week or hosting an academic panel. And I'm also um, president of a nonprofit called CS Sidekicks. And so it's not directly affiliated with Duke, but we recruit Duke students to serve as the sidekicks or the mentors for the students. And what we do is really focus on broadening participation in computing for the students in the public school system around Duke. And where faculty have been very helpful for me is like doing the outreach in terms of getting students to apply for our program, especially as me being one student, it's hard for me to reach the freshmen since I'm so far removed from that year. And so I cold emailed a few of our like entry CS professors. And as soon as I sent that email, people started applying. And so I feel like that just shows the wide network that professors have in terms of reaching different students and grad students as well. And so I think just to faculty, I would recommend really uplifting the different initiatives that your students are working on because a lot of your students are doing really cool things. And so like highlighting that in your emails or on your discussion boards um, can really help further um, our mission of inclusivity in tech. Yeah, all great points. Thank you all. Um, and yeah, just as a reminder, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them for our panelists uh, in the Q&A section. Um, and we'll move on to our next question, which is, what is something that is currently not present at your institution that you would hope to see your department implement in the future? Uh, and for this one, we'll start with Reagan again. Yes, so at Duke currently, um, only one social and policy-oriented computing course counts towards the elective requirement. And I think in the future, it could be beneficial to either require one or two of these courses or not have them as electives and have them as like, part of the standard course um, classes, just because I think this goes back to the ideas we were talking about of like forming this well-rounded computer scientist. And by having these really great classes as electives, a lot of people either push them to the side or don't treat them as something that's meaningful. And I feel like learning about things like race, gender, and class are really core to being a computer scientist. So I would say to like Duke, I would hope to see these things be valued more in the computer science curriculum. Yeah, totally agree. The Kiana or Samantha, do any of you have anything to add for this question? Yeah, I can totally relate. Um, in my undergrad, there was only like one unit or one credit of ethics courses required, and it wasn't. It's kind of something everyone just seemed to not take seriously. So I think having um more of that like social curriculum. Uh, into the standard CS course requirements would be great. Absolutely, I agree 100%. So as ACE members, we've all had the opportunity to connect with ACE community members outside of our role on the board. Curious to know for the panelists, how have you felt that these interactions have helped you in terms of support and or feeling included? And we're going to start off with Kiana. Yeah, so I have been on the student advisory board ever since my first year. And since then, it's been really great getting to know all the community members, uh, both like through our online meetings, but also, you know, at conferences too. I met with some community members at Tapia um, this past month, and it was really just great talking with them and catching up and hearing about what they're doing in terms of like creating a better inclusive space and in computing and seeing maybe how I can help. Um, and actually, you know, like 
Um, I'm also thinking of like ways I can collaborate with some of the organizations or community members in my own student leadership roles at my institution and for our own uh, DEIA events that we hope to host. So I think that's been really great. And um, my time on the board has also been super amazing in that I have a lot of opportunities to share my voice. Um, I remember uh, at the last panel that we did in uh, with this, I talked about how my voice is really my strongest asset and how I really enjoy being able to share my experiences in hopes of connecting with others and inspiring others. So being able to do panels like this, or I remember one time we did a panel with for the CSTA annual conference a year or two ago, and just being able to broaden my own participation in computing and being able to see if I can encourage others to get involved in uh, critical ways, I think has been super amazing. Absolutely. You know, everything you just said is music to my ears. I love to hear stuff like that. Reagan, do you have anything that you would like to add? Yeah, I would just say overall, um, I love the mission of ACE. And I think that every time that I've interacted with someone who is affiliated with ACE, it's always been such a positive experience. And I can really feel that everyone wants to see you succeed. And just the fact that we all kind of hold through the value of bettering the computing education field and fighting towards equity and inclusion. Um, to me, it's just really exciting. And as Kiana said, I've even like brought in my own participation by I met with someone and she immediately connected me with people in North Carolina who are working towards this mission. And so like I was able to get involved with some initiatives that I didn't even know about in my state. And so that just shows that everyone really just loves to collaborate and share what they're doing. And then similarly, um, just being able to attend conferences and get to support some of the members' presentations has been really cool to me, um, just to see like what initiatives they're participating in and what they're doing to uplift ACE is overall just really cool. And I always try to tell people, especially undergraduates, different ways to get involved. I know we have like different positions that were open to being like research assistants. So I'm always happy to like share those opportunities and get even more people in ACE. Absolutely, absolutely. Samantha, do you have anything to add here? Um, yes. Yeah. So for me, I have joined um like after joining ACE, I kind of feel that my voice as as well has been uh, valued and I'm being able to contribute to a larger extent af um after be after having this recognition because I remember like Currently, for one of the organizations that I'm a vice president of, we are taking a new initiative where we are um, launching a program where students would be able to sort of uh, experience the the uh, so, like sort of experience the major that they have selected even before taking their uh, junior or sophomore level class sorry junior or professional level classes and I kind of and I really wanted that uh, and I really wanted that message to be sent to all the freshmen and sophomore students and I kind of uh, felt that after uh, because of my participation in ACE and all the other um, clubs and organizations that I'm a part of um, I I have been able to communicate that information uh, to a better in a more better way to all the professors and faculties which is why they are able they were able to send that information uh, to all the freshmen students and which is why we have gotten a huge amount of responses ever since that so I feel that um, that in that way ACE has supported me to a very large extent and along with that I've been uh, I am being able to contribute my knowledge and I'm also learning from all the community members that uh, we interact with and um, yes it has been a very good and a very positive experience so far. Hey, great to hear. And you know I think I'm going to add my own contribution to this right here. So I've been a member of ACE for about two going on three years now. So I would say my interaction with the board has changed over time as I've become more familiar with it. One of the things that's always stood out as a very prominent advantage is just the capacity to be around other people that are doing such a great work. You know, it's fantastic to be able to check in with other members on the board and see, you know, what you have going on over here, what's coming down the pipeline for you next, and to be able to hear all of these fascinating things that everybody is doing is such a such an exciting experience to be a part of something where everybody is working, not necessarily towards the same common goal, but doing their own things in their own vertical to be able to be successful. I feel like that's such a such a fascinating thing. You understand what I'm talking about? 
Bridget, do you have anything that you would like to contribute in the same capacity? Yeah, I totally agree with like just having a space to be around people who have the same goals as you, like have the same values as you. Like it sounds like oh, like a no brainer, but like whenever I'm in spaces like this, like I come out feeling so much better. Like, wow, like there's people who go through what I go through. Like I'm not crazy. Like, like it's like where were these people like when I thought I was so alone in wanting this? Um, and I think it like especially for like first year students in CS who are like underrepresented, like I I would want them to feel that sense of like, oh, you're not alone. There's other people who think like you um, early on. Um, and I think that's like the space that ACE creates um, and the people in ACE are just really cool, really nice. And yeah, I've really enjoyed being in, in it for the last uh, two years. Nice. Um, yeah, and then our last question before we um, kick it off to Q&A is, um, is there any advice that you would give to students who are new to computer science? Um, and we will start off with Reagan. Yes, thank you. I would say my advice is just general to people in computer science or entering, but I would just say really be your authentic self and Try not to dim your light because of others that you may encounter in the field. For example, like I love wearing bright colors, as you can see. And even like in my job this summer, I still like, you know, came to work in the outfits that I liked, even if, you know, other people didn't think that was necessarily, you know, what a computer scientist should look like. And so I would say just stay true to yourself. Try to find a community because that really helps and it helps to be able to lean on your peers. And also don't be afraid to ask for help. That's something that you know, people are constantly learning and I'm even learning that myself, but there truly are people that are out there who want to support you and help you and um, support the dreams that you wish to pursue. Yeah, thank you. Samantha, do you want to go next? Mm -hmm. uh, of course. So um, my advice would be very specific to um, to to like computer science students themselves. Not um, So I would say that there are many areas of computer science. So for example, there are there is robotics, there is machine learning, there is web development, there is software development, mobile app develop, de development. There are different like there are different fields of knowledge that we can explore. There are a lot of students that I've seen uh, that just because they uh, struggle in their classes, for example, data structures and algorithm, I've, um, I've uh, seen that a lot of uh, students think that that's a rel relatively challenging course and because of that they think that they are not um, and because they struggle in that course they think that computer science in general it's a very difficult subject and they should drop out from it but I would say that there are many other fields that they can explore and they can look into um, for example web development that's a really like that is one of the ways through which we present our ideas and prototypes in different uh, competitions it, uh, in, in the competitions that we attend in computer science. So I would say that stay, staying persistent, staying resilient, and um, not giving up is uh, should be one of the main mottos of all computer science students. And it's really important to as well explore other areas before taking the decision of dropping out of computer science if anyone is thinking of doing it. Yeah, thanks, Samantha. And then Kiana? Yeah, I think advice that I have is to aim to take inspiration from others, not necessarily strive for replication of those around you. And I think for me, you know, I'm the first person in my family to pursue pursue this type of career. And I felt, you know, extremely out of place going in, especially being surrounded by a lot of students who may have started computing or knowing a lot about the field um, going into college. And unfortunately, as the computing field stands uh, right now, there's a lot of need for improvement to for it to be a comfortable space for minorities to feel empowered and welcomed. And sometimes, you know, we're told as marginalized communities in the field that we need to work a little extra harder um, to get where other people are at. But, you know, I think I definitely say that it's okay to rely on your support system and to focus on your own self growth. And, uh, you know, to also remember to take a step back and just be proud of how far you've come throughout your journey. And I think that's something I need to remind myself too that um, I don't need to necessarily keep pushing myself to do harder because of the environment I'm in. And that um, because my work or like everybody, your work, your identities, your voices not only matter, 
but they're also vital to making a more inclusive space. Absolutely. You know, we've heard some great perspectives so far. Just want to give a shout out to our panelists so far. Y'all have been doing an amazing job and it's been great to hear from everybody. Yeah. Going to pivot right now into our, our question that we got in the Zoom chat, which is, what approaches or activities do you think get young people most excited to learn more about computer science? Whoever has an answer for this right here, feel free to jump right into it and then we can move from there. Yeah, so something I'd like to talk about is a bit more about the research I've done with uh, social computing and creating a curriculum for that for middle and high school level. But I think it definitely can also apply to um, maybe like younger people in their undergrad. So uh, within that project, we really challenged students to think more about the social designs of different technologies and the social impact that they have. So thinking about machine learning bias, misinformation. And I think putting technology and computing in that perspective gets a lot of students interested. Uh, actually, in my paper, uh, I think this, the statistic was around 80% of students were a lot more interested on learning about how that technology ties into the social impact of their broader community rather than maybe necessarily just the technical skills. So I think figuring out ways to connect what they're learning to maybe how it applies to them in, as students in their day-to-day -day lives gets people really excited and really interested in learning about how what they're creating impacts uh, their community as a whole. That's great. That's great stuff, Kiana. Thank you for sharing. Any of the other panelists, do you have a perspective that you would like to add here? Yeah, Kiana gave a great answer. I think <laughs> that was really cool. And I love look at all her amazing research. Wow. Um, we have another question um from the chat. Um in hindsight, is there anything you wish you'd done differently across your academic experience? You know, yeah, whoever wants to take it can jump in. Um, so I would say that for me, I started uh, joining all the clubs and organizations. I started getting involved in um, with the computer science world in general outside of academics and studies from my junior year. Uh, which I don't think is the is the best approach. I think that it's really important for students to get involved as soon as they get into college. Because um, for me, because I sort of like changed countries uh, two years ago, so I took a long time to get adjusted to the new environment. But I feel that if I were to get involved, that that if I had the opportunity, I would have definitely started getting getting involved and um, you know, exploring my skills and my and exploring the the different interests that I have beginning from starting from my uh, freshman year, because I think that it's really important for us to realize that um, during our undergraduate journey, we have to sort of like build a portfolio, build a resume that we can uh, put into our profile so that when we apply for jobs and internships, and even if we uh, decide to go to graduate school, we have something to show to, we have something to like showcase to the, um, to the employers and also to the graduate school advisors. And I think that that uh, journey should start from beginning from the freshman year. So I wish that if, if I had the opportunity and if I could go back in time, I would have definitely started getting involved um, and started, you know, doing research, even, even if um, like back then I probably would not have all the experience and all the knowledge that is required. Um, however, I still would have um, you know, gone to the approach to professors and ask them if they would, you know, like started getting involved at the very beginning instead of doing it from my junior year. Thanks, Manza. Um, anyone else want to take this question? Yes, I would say on my end, I wish I got involved with research much earlier. Um, I think when I was like an underclassman, like freshman, sophomore, I thought that research was like extremely complicated and like very far away from where I was at. Um, but I think looking back, I definitely could have, I guess, sought out different opportunities earlier, um, especially because I've 
loved my past two years, being involved on different research teams and attending different research-based conferences. And now that I'm graduating, I'm like, I want to do all these things. Um, not that time is running out, but I do wish that I had done it earlier because I've met so many cool people through those opportunities. So to any underclassmen that are listening, I would say like, don't be afraid to cold email a professor or apply for any opportunities, even if you feel like you're not qualified, um, because I think the hardest part is to put yourself out there, but you never know what someone will say. Um, so I would just recommend doing that and see what happens. I think for me, kind of, I guess just like going off of my previous answer on advice I would give to a freshman and talking about how you should really focus on your own personal growth and um, being able to also like pause and take a step back and be proud of yourself. Um, I mentioned how that's something I'm trying to do a lot more. I think um, in my freshman year, I was super excited to be at a school with so many opportunities, especially since at my high school, there weren't really a lot of technical opportunities. So I really like pushed myself to get involved in everything um, to the point where maybe I neglected different parts of my health or maybe I push myself to keep like one upping myself in a way um, with things I was involved in so I think that's definitely something that I would I would change going if I were to go back is to kind of like always just take a step back and like appreciate the work that I've done and that the work that I've done is enough and that I don't necessarily need to keep going or like keep pushing myself um, beyond certain boundaries and I think I'd also tell myself that you really do need to take care of yourself first in order to effectively help others to the best of your ability. So I think that's also something, you know, I would tell anybody listening right now that it's definitely important to take care of yourself in order to make the best impact that you can. Yeah, for sure. College is really hard and I'm sure there's like lots of things we all wish we'd done differently, um, but we're still here and we are, and all these panelists uh, are so doing so great. So um yeah, there will be challenges along the way, but you get through it. Um, um, kind of along the lines of self-care, we have another question um, in the chat. Uh, given the wide range of activities you participate in, what does self-care look like as a student and what would you suggest for other students? Yeah, I think for me, uh, something that I actually picked up on uh, is just like a non like technical related hobby. Like my freshman year, I started learning how to crochet and like I made the headband I made right now. I have this in like a billion colors. And um, I think something like that, like something creative or like something non-technical related that you could just do um, in your free time, I think helped a lot in terms of my mental health and being able to like turn maybe my stress into a cute project in the end um, and kind of channel that energy elsewhere. Um, but I think also like um, deliberately scheduling time in your schedule to, you know, meet with friends or like to take a break, I think is really vital. Um, but I think those are kind of some of the basic strategies that I've done as a student to try to balance that, but definitely always a work in progress. Yeah, honestly, going off from uh, what Kiana said, I think one of the biggest struggles that most of the college students face from 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 a very um like from their freshman year is how to manage time effectively and how to be efficient with everything that they do. Um, so one of the things that has always worked out for me to to properly make sure that I am able to balance my social life with my academics is writing down everything on a piece of paper, my entire schedule. Um, like what I will be doing starting from uh, when I, you know, have my breakfast to when I go to bed. If that is, if we, if I can like, if we can like sort of uh, visually see it somewhere, um, it can be on in online calendars or it can be on pieces of paper. I think that it definitely helps in making sure that we are able to contribute enough time to both our mental health, to our social life, to our, to our academics, um, and also to make sure that we don't fall sick, I would say, during this entire uh, academic journey. So I would say like time management is definitely one of the biggest, uh, like how to manage time effectively and properly, the approaches, the strategies can be different for everyone, but it's one of the best ways in which we can um, sort of make sure that we are able to uh, lead a, a healthy life while being in the computer science journey.
Ah, uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Samantha. So I would like to follow this up with another question, maybe moving a little bit of a different direction, but kind of similar to some stuff we were talking about earlier in the panel. What specific strategies can faculty and institutions implement to make computing spaces more inclusive and welcoming? Whoever would like to take this question could go ahead and say point. Yeah, so I could actually, <laughs> first I'm gonna repeat the question. What specific strategies can faculty and institutions implement to make computing spaces more inclusive and welcoming? And I can actually start us off here. So I find that in my experience, the most successful initiatives are those that make students feel welcome. You know, mentorship ultimately is about providing somebody with the opportunity to learn from somebody that's been where they are right now. So I find that whenever I'm thinking about spaces, strategies, or initiatives that have helped me be successful, I think about the things that kind of match me with somebody who has experienced what I'm experiencing, that has been where I've been, and is right now where I would like to be. Being able to establish that channel of communication and maybe talk to these people, talk about what they would do in my particular situation, what they have done in the past. All of this stuff is very, very pertinent to being able to establish good, healthy habits like we've been talking about. And this is where the self-care comes in. This is where all these different things come in to make you a well-rounded individual. Does anybody have anything they would like to add from there? Um, so, yes, definitely what Jabari said. I also think that it's really uh, like the learning curve of a certain student to a very large extent it depends on the person that the student is learning from. In other words, the behavior of the professor, the attributes of the professor, how the professor is, chan is channeling the information to the, uh, to the students. Because um, if we don't have a very good relationship with the professor or if we sort of uh, dislike the um, like the way in which the professor is channeling information to us or delivering the contents of the class to us. It would it essentially becomes a big uh, barrier for the student to understand that specific class. Um, and it it essentially happened to me as well. Back when I was in high school, I remember I had this uh, professor who probably would not be really cooperative with all the students, but which, which essentially uh, did um which essentially uh, made all the students not learn the content of the material um of the class properly or the material properly however i also remember like after after school i would go to another physics professor and that physics professor essentially would teach physics to us with passion with emotion and that to a large extent impacted the way in which i perceived physics it made me sort of fall in love with the subject that i did not really like um, because it was just taught by another person. So I kind of feel that the um, that the connection with the that, that ha having a good connection with the professor, having a good relationship with our faculty and advisors is really important in our um, in the in our growth and success in a specific class or in our uh, journey in general as well. Thank you both for those great insights. Um, we have one more question um, from the chat uh, before we wrap up. It is, as a CS student, how important is mentorship for you and why? And I think we kind of hit on it in the last question, but if anyone wants to take this one too, that'd be great. Yeah, for me, I think mentorship is extremely helpful. I remember my first year, I. I think I was a part of like five different mentorship programs revolving around like um, computing or also like in the Filipino Student Association, um, like for basically all different parts of my identity, I tried to find a mentor for, um, which I think was super helpful. Because um, again, yeah, like uh, going into college and transitioning to college is such a unique experience and space to be in. And um, as somebody who maybe didn't have a lot of maybe mentors or like other family members who were going through that or have gone through that, mentorship programs and those opportunities were extremely helpful for me and I think it also really inspired me to mentor a lot of students this year as a senior and kind of like passing down the knowledge I've learned from my mentors in the past so 
Um, I think overall, it's just a really great practice to be able to share your experiences with, with others and also be able to take in other experiences from other individuals as well. Um, for me, I would say that mentorship has also been a very, um, has also been really important because if it was not for my mentor, I guess I would have spent a huge amount of uh, time in my studies and not do all the other clubs and organizations that I'm currently a part of because I remember that back in high school, I used to, uh, my high school did not have a lot of different um, opportunities, both technical and non-technical. Uh, it did not have a lot of different clubs or organizations, um, which is why I would spend a huge amount of time in my uh, academics, which helped me get uh, like good grades in class, but at the at the same time, massively damaged my uh, social skills, I would say, right? Because it's not only about, um, it's not only about academics, we also have to take care or we also have to focus on our, on how, on our communication skills, on our networking skills, on the way in which we collaborate with others, our team working, um, so on, on the way in which we essentially cooperate in a team or work in a team. So having a mentor from my freshman year, I would say did help me to realize this and uh, start getting involved as, as soon as I could, right? But because uh, he also um, helped me to understand the fact that research is important in my, in, in my growth um, and also the fact that I have to start looking for internships and jobs from my junior year and, and essentially get a job or an internship by the time I uh, end my senior year. So I kind of feel that mentorship uh, is really important in order to guide a specific student, in order to guide a freshman who doesn't really know the path that they should choose for their own growth and development. I feel like they both put it very well, but I will just echo that mentorship to me is one of the most important things as a computer science student, because as they mentioned, there's there's so many resources out there. And then also mentorship just helps strengthen that sense of belonging and support for students. All right, thank you all. That was all of the questions that we had. I would like to give like a huge thank you to our panelists for being here today um, and sharing their experiences. We really appreciate you sharing them with the ACE organization um, and would like to thank ACE, uh, specifically Minerva and um, Monica for um, bringing us together um, and helping us to organize this panel for you all. Um, and yeah, our next lecture series is in November. Um, as you could see in the chat. Um, Jabari, do you have any uh, closing statements? Yeah, just following up on what you said, we'd like to thank our panelists. We have some great people doing some great work and I can't give them enough props for everything that they're doing. Always so impressive to talk to everybody. Hope you all enjoyed the panel today and looking forward to what we have coming up next for everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thanks everyone.